How would you describe yourself in three words? Okay, three words. These are, this is tough. I'm incredibly optimistic, kind, and goofy. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'm excited for you to see this brand new episode. I want to say thanks to our partners at AKA for giving us such a great place to stay. When we're in town, sometimes we're filming stories for about a week. And I don't love renting a stranger's house. So it's nice to have a full kitchen, a place to spread out and have our pre-production meetings, and have all the luxuries of a hotel, but still have the comforts of home. So you guys got to check them out. Anyway, now let's get into our story. Hi, I'm Kendra Scott, founder and CEO of Kendra Scott, and you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Who would you like to change jobs with for a week? Uh, I would love to be a Broadway actress for a week. What's your spirit animal? Ooh, my spirit animal is probably a tiger. What was your very first job? Uh, I worked at Super Value as a checker, and I was really good at it. I was quite fast. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here in beautiful Austin, Texas with Kendra Scott. Kendra, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. We're so glad you came to Austin to visit us. I usually ask my guests, how do you get this job? Oh, well, you know, I started my first business when I was 19, which was a hat shop. And I loved fashion since I was a little girl. And, you know, I really wanted to create something special and amazing. And I felt like there was something missing in jewelry. And I started it, you know, out of the extra bedroom of my house, and here we are today. So you knew what you wanted to do from a very early age? I did. My aunt was a fashion director. I grew up in a little town in Wisconsin, and she was in Milwaukee, and she would travel to all the shows in Milan and Paris and bring back pictures uh, of, her show, of her being at the shows. And I remember, you know, living in this small town, nobody was fashion designer where I grew up. So it was just like something bigger than life to think about doing it. But I was so engaged and excited about it. And to me, fashion was magic. Uh, you could put on a beautiful dress and I would get in my Aunt Jo's closet and like suddenly you become somebody else. And it was, it was amazing and it was magical to me. Even both my parents, my father was a country lawyer. Uh, he set up shop for himself. I used to help him in the summers and on weekends. And you know, my mother was a Mary Kay director. She started out as a consultant, sure. an entrepreneur. She yeah. grew her business out of our you know, little laundry room where we had stock of Mary Kay cosmetics and I would see her grow this business. So I was inspired by all these amazing people who weren't afraid to try something new and to get out of their comfort zone and take a risk. And I think that really inspired me to want to do the same. And, you know, fortunately, I had such an incredible support group between my parents and my dynamic aunt who were always rooting for me and really, you know, had me believe that, you know, you can grow up and be what you want to be. Uh, and I believed it. I always felt like I wanted to do something more every day, you know? I, I just, I had that in me since I was a little kid. Uh, you know, whether it was selling lemonade on the corner, I see kids, you know, selling lemonade today and I'm like, they may be running a big company someday. You know, you, I had that initiative to want to work. I had the initiative to want to create and design since I was a little kid. Um, but I think that it's just that having that fire in your belly. And if you have that fire in your belly and that desire to want to do something more, you can be a great entrepreneur. What was your first job after lemonade stand, maybe? Yeah, well, I worked uh, as a checker at a grocery store, and um, I actually loved that job. I worked at The Gap as a sales associate, which was a really great experience of learning, getting my chops into retail and fashion, um, and did that throughout high school and a little bit in college. Um, I worked as a, a waitress. Uh, I had, at one point, I think I was having three jobs at one time. So, you know, I've worked since I was first able to get a job. Uh, and, you know, I loved it. I, I loved, but I loved the fashion side of it. I yeah. always wanted jobs in fashion. You know, I think about being a checker at the grocery store, and it actually was one of my favorite jobs I ever had. And I think, you know, you're relating to people. They're coming up in front of you, a stranger, and you have an opportunity to make their day happy. And I really felt like that was the thing that I, lesson that I learned 
learned is that in just a few moments of interacting with someone as you're checking out their groceries, you can take somebody that might be having an off day and you can sense that when they walk up and hopefully you could leave with them smiling or laughing and that you've left them on their way in like a happy place. And I think that was impactful to me is that in retail, in these jobs where you're public facing, it's like being on stage. You have to go out and you have to connect with people. And I learned that very, very young and how important that was. And that was a gift. So you have 70 plus stores now. Yeah. How involved are you in the day to day? Well, you know, I think having those experiences have really helped me be a great leader to our team. And it's our family. We treat our customers, but we treat each other like brothers and sisters. So family is my first core pillar of our company. And I think that has been a big part of our success. Everybody is given incredible respect here. And so in our stores, for example, if you go in, we give all of our associates, whether you're a part-time sales associate or holiday help, the power to please the customer. You don't have to ask a manager for approval. You can do whatever you need to do in that moment to make that customer happy. And we give them that respect and that power because I believe in them. And I wasn't necessarily given that as a young associate, and I knew that I wanted to do something different. And so those experiences have led us to have this incredible retail experience. And when you walk in our stores, you feel it. And you feel that these young women and men are empowered. And they feel like, wow, I've been given this opportunity. I don't want to I don't want to mess it up. I want to do something good with it. And it really is a special place to walk into. We host a lot of our folks here in Austin. So we do you know, a lot of different annual meetings with our managers and assistant managers. We have event coordinators, uh, that community managers that go out into the community in every single market they come here as well and then we go out to them uh, you know we are in the stores I'm traveling often to the stores myself our executive team other leaders in the organization we want to touch feel meet our teams that's the most important thing to us and so I think that makes a big difference as well let's talk about the F word failure for a little bit F word, whoa, Brian, what kind of show do we have here? No. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about their failures because, you know, you know, whatever. But the reality is you can't have success without it. Well, first of all, I love talking about failure because I agree with you. I think failure, you know, is your bridge to help you to the success that's going to come upcoming in your life. And you have to go through those failures to get you to be able to cross the bridge to the next place that you're going. I always say that. Um, you know, I had an early failure with my first business was a hat company, a hat shop here in Austin. And I ran that business, worked the shop floor, did every aspect of it from accounting to marketing, uh, worked you know, every single day, had a little help from my mom, thankfully. Um, but no matter how hard I worked, I couldn't get that business to take off. And after five years, I had to close it. And well, I. Well, first of all, I thought hats were going to be the next big thing. You know, I wanted it to be like 1940 again, where everybody was wearing hats, and that just didn't work out. Um, you know, people are wearing them a little bit more now, but still, it just wasn't it wasn't right. And I, I, I think that I was so focused on that that I wasn't able to see what really was working. And I was making jewelry then, uh, bringing it into my hat shop, and the jewelry would sell out the day I put it in the case. Yet I was so focused on the hat thing, the hats have got to work, that the thing that was working, I wasn't even paying attention to. And I think that was such an incredible lesson is, you know, sometimes you have to take yourself out of the day-to-day -day mix and get a kind of a 360 perspective on what's going on. And when you do that, you can really get a better idea of where your success might lie and that it's okay sometimes to change your course. Uh, and closing that shop, I mean, it was beyond a failure. I had lost all of my savings. I felt like I had let my family down. Uh, I had to go out and just get a job. You know, the entrepreneur in me felt like, oh, you know, here we go. I've got, I've got to pay the bills. Um, and even though, again, that wasn't what I had set out to do, the lessons I learned getting that job and the opportunities that I had there, all of those things, that experience, the hat shop, uh, led me to be able to build Kendra Scott and have the success that we're having today. I had to do those things to get here. Talk about some of the lessons along the way you've learned in order to get it right. Well, I clearly hats were not in demand. We learned that lesson. Yeah. Um, but for jewelry, again, I, I think what I identified with the hat business is understanding where there's white space, where there's opportunity. And most of the time when you want something that you can't find, there are other people out there that 
probably feel the same way. And for me, I loved semi-precious stone jewelry. I loved colored gemstones. I loved handcrafted jewelry, but I could not afford it. I was 19 years old when I started the hat shop, and, and I was 27, 28 uh, when I started Kendra Scott. I always say, you know, I've got an MBA in the school of hard knocks. Uh, that was my education. I, you know, I had dropped out of college to start my hat company. I was really determined that I wanted this to work and it finally I think it's hard when especially when you have that like you just realize I can't make this work anymore and to come to that realization sometimes it's okay to pull the plug on something and I think for a lot of entrepreneurs that can be scary but at the same time it's probably that that's going again it's going to lead you to the next thing that you're going to do this isn't that it's over it's just the beginning of a new phase I love that. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Yeah, exactly. So what are those signals? How do you know? Really I mean, I don't think that there's a time, right? I mean, it could be three months and it could be five years in my case. I would definitely let it go longer than it should have gone. And you do it out of necessity because you have to survive. And so sometimes you have to do that, unfortunately. And then what it does is it, it's kind of like you know, well, what you had, you thought you were going to do, where you are, is totally different place. I said I will never be in retail again. Here's the woman who has 75 retail stores today. But I did say that. And I thought, I want to be on the other end of it. I want to be the designer, the manufacturer. You write a purchase order, and the retail stores have to sell it. That sounded safe to me. That sounded like I could manage that. And I loved the jewelry design part. So after I closed the hat store, customers were calling me. They weren't calling me for hats. They were calling me for the jewelry that I had made in the store. They wanted a pair of matching earrings. They wanted a necklace. So I found myself still making jewelry. And I realized, you know what? maybe there's something to this. And so I was pregnant with my first son and I was put on bed rest off and on and I created a little collection of jewelry with $500. And when my firstborn son was three months old, I put him in a little baby carrier. I put this little collection of jewelry in a tea box that we had been given for our wedding, a wooden tea box, which I still have today. And I went store to store here in Austin, Texas. And you know, here we go. We started writing orders on a, you know, like on a, just a sheet of paper. I wrote orders down, and I sold all my samples to the last store I went to that day because I didn't have enough money to buy the materials I needed to fulfill those orders. And I think when I started Kendra Scott, I didn't have a grand master plan. See, when I had the hat box, I was going to open hat stores all over the country. I was going to be like it was going to be the next big wave that was going to happen in fashion, right? With Kendra Scott, it was more like, you know what, I want to design some beautiful jewelry and I want to be a mom. I want to be there for this little baby, so maybe I can create something that will allow me to have the flexibility to be a great present mother, but still do something that I love, which was fashion and design. I didn't have any big grand plans. I didn't have a huge big business plan. I did sure didn't have that we would be sitting here and we would be talking today. Um, none of those things were out until I started seeing the momentum and the excitement around the jewelry pick up that I thought, Maybe I have something. Maybe there is something to this. Did you get any flack or pushback? You know, last time this didn't go so well. You know, I think when I started the jewelry brand, I did it so subtly. Okay, so again, I didn't go out in the world and say, hey guys, I'm doing this again. I'm going to try again because I was afraid of, of failure. And I just wanted to like do something. And it, at that moment, I didn't really care what people thought. I just wanted to be with this new little baby of mine and I wanted to do what I loved. I missed fashion and design. And so I made this little collection and then it started to get momentum. I sold it into the stores and within a few days they had sold out. And they were calling me wanting to reorder. And I'm like, okay. And then another store would hear about this store selling me and then they would call me and say, we'd love to see your line. Well, I had to produce a line because I didn't have a line. So I started to produce a line and I was selling to more and more stores in Austin and I, uh, the same thing, a Dallas rep called me who had a showroom and she said, who are you? And I said, I'm Kendra Scott. She goes, well, what is your product? What are you selling? And I said, I'm sorry. She was very, you know, kind of aggressive. And she said, none of my Austin stores are buying my brands. They're buying, they said they're buying from this local jewelry designer, Kendra Scott. I want to see your stuff. So I went to Dallas and I took my little collection. I actually upgraded from a tea box to an official jewelry carrier. And she carried my line. She saw the line, she loved it, and she wanted to carry it. And I went to every single market, and there was no other designers that were in her showroom selling. A few, one handbag designer, but no other jewelry designers, they didn't go. And she's, you know, she's like, well, why, you don't have to come, I'll sell it. And I said, no one will sell it better than me. 
and sure enough, we were writing orders like crazy and it just started to take off. And I think that's when I had a little fuel in the gas tank. I felt like, okay, we're onto something and I could put it a little bit more out there and a little bit more, but we flew under the radar, Brian, for a long, long time. I've been at this for 16 years. I just was awarded Breakthrough Designer of the Year by Accessories Council last year. What would your advice be now to someone who's trying to start something like you did? You know, I think it was what I did love about my approach in the beginning, and it wasn't planned, is I didn't go out and try to get investment capital because I didn't know that I had an idea that was working yet. I had to kind of have a, get a proven concept. So what that allowed me to do is have the time to kind of prove the concept and to get some successes under my belt. Um, and then, you know, I kept waiting, like, where do I, now I wanted investment capital. It was really risky to run a business on lines of credit and bank loans and credit card debt. Uh, and I kept asking people, well, you know, how do you get investment capital? Well, you know, you need to find an angel. And I'd be like, oh, that sounds great. Where, you know, where are these angels? Like, how do I find these angels? And, you know, they weren't just popping up. And a great, you asked me earlier, the best piece of business advice, one of my dear friends said to me, Kendra, you just focus on building your business and building a great business. And if you build it, they will come. And boy, did they come. We were getting calls from investors, you know, like crazy um, once we started proving that we could really do something great. And it took time to do that. It did not happen overnight. So what is the Kendra Scott brand? What does it stand for? Well, I'm a mom first before I'm a CEO, before I'm a designer, I'm a mom. And so I really wanted to build a business that really was had a foundation of family. I wanted to create a company that supported families, that supported other moms, that you could have a great career and you could still be there for your family. And so that was a core foundation of this brand. Because I believe that in life, if you're a happy individual, you will have great success no matter what you do. And I think you know we are creating environment that gives you a full and happy life not just a happy work life, but a full and happy life. And so when you're happy, you come to work happy and you put happiness into your products and you are joyful and we're creating these joyful moments in our stores for our customers as well. And it all translates into this brand that is yellow, that is sunshine, that is joy. Our products are beautiful because we have beautiful, happy people creating and designing them. Our stores are joyful because we have beautiful, happy people that are working in those stores that love our customers and love what they're doing every day and still have the opportunity to go home to their families and have that balance. And I think that's so important. And I think if more businesses got that, this world would be a very different place. You know, I think when you come through a Kendra Scott office, as you have, you'll see that it's unlike any place else. Uh, you know, we have a gym, we have classes for uh, exercise, we have lunch and learns for our employees to learn other things that they might want to know, like CPR certification or flower arranging, uh, or you know, advice about you know private wealth and how to invest your money and things that can help them in their lives in general.